Hello, Benjamin Dome from the American Hip Institute, presenting today on labral augmentation in the hip using the knotless pull-through technique. Notably, the knotless pull-through technique is a technique which we have used extensively for labral reconstruction. This technique has been adapted for labral augmentation using the exact same set of steps as for labral reconstruction. So the technique need not be changed. However, the difference is that whatever is left of the native labrum is preserved. Now, labral reconstruction has been identified as a technically procedure in this consensus uh, study of high volume hip arthroscopists. It has been agreed that results in low volume centers may not be reproducible. And even amongst high volume uh, hip arthroscopists, only 8% at the time of this study performed more than 40 reconstructions per year. We published this study comparing labral reconstruction to segmental resection some time ago, and this was an important study in establishing the clinical basis for labral reconstruction. Essentially, when faced with the irreparable labrum, the choices were segmental resection versus reconstruction at that time, and we found substantially improved results with reconstruction compared to segmental resection. So why restore the labrum in the face of an irreparable labrum? Firstly, we know there's biomechanical evidence. The labrum is critical to the function of the hip. Secondly, as in the study I just showed, there is clinical evidence of better results with labral restoration than with debridement. And never to be completely overlooked, finally, is common sense. The hip was made with a labrum for a reason. So the labral reconstruction with the knotless pull-through technique in the primary setting for segmental loss of labrum or calcified labrum, and in the revision setting for failed debridement or failed repair. The technology that has been uh, provided to us, including the knotless fiber tack and knotless suture tack anchors, uh, as well as the 3.9 knotless corkscrew anchors, have made a variety of improvements in the technique possible that have made the technique much quicker, more efficient, more reproducible, more reliable. The knotless pull-through technique initially was used for segmental uh, reconstructions and subsequently for uh, circumferential reconstructions, and it can be used with the exact same set of steps for both, one needs to determine what is viable labrum and replace whatever labrum is not viable. And that's where labral augmentation has come into play because sometimes there is some labrum that's uh, viable. It's not enough to recreate a seal, but we hesitate to sacrifice it entirely. One of my favorite quotes from Thomas Edison, I have not failed, I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. I'll try to share with you some of the ways that won't work that I've experienced, as well as some of the ways that do. The circumferential labral reconstruction using the knotless pull-through technique was published in Arthroscopy Techniques and was developed as a technique to make this procedure easier, less technically demanding, and faster and more reproducible. One of the major uh, improvements of this technique was that it removed the need for measuring. We no longer had to measure the length of the defect or the expected length of the graft because we would complete the reconstruction before amputating the graft. And I'll show you these steps. So here are the steps of the circumferential labral reconstruction using the knotless pull-through technique. We begin by preparing the rim uh, and then we place all of the knotless anchors all the way around the rim. So the anchors are placed circumferentially around the rim. Next, we insert the tendon graft uh, and then pull the end of the graft out the posterior lateral portal. Finally, we fixate the graft with the pre-placed anchors working from anterior to posterior and lastly, amputate the excess graft. Now, the important thing to note here, as I've said once or twice before, is it's the exact same set of steps for a labral augmentation, except that we incorporate the native labrum into the graft in the same sutures. At the end, we can see our shot where we release traction and confirm the seal against the femoral head. These are second look pictures uh, from a labral reconstruction, and you can see how fully incorporated the chondrolabral transition is, as well as the anterior and posterior anastomosis where graft meets native labrum. It's almost impossible to tell where graft ends and native labrum or transverse acetabular ligament begins. 
In terms of outcomes, uh, we've published the minimum five-year outcomes uh, of labor reconstruction with a nested uh, benchmark control group of labor repairs and shown uh, sustained improvements in patient outcomes. Uh, they were comparable functional outcomes when compared to a benchmark control group. But it's important to note that the um, satisfaction is a little bit better when we can achieve a primary repair than with a labral reconstruction. And that's where labral augmentation has entered the picture because we attribute this to the preservation of the circumferential fibers all the way around the labrum, uh, which provide a hoop stress that seals the ball better in the socket. So if we can better seal uh, the ball in the socket, uh, then we can uh, better achieve normal mechanics of the hip. And here we augment the labrum with a graft. The graft is uh, placed uh, right above the labrum, but they're incorporated together. The sutures are passed around both the labrum and the graft so that they're incorporated as one uh, using the same technique. So here's a, a case example. We see on the left a bird's eye view where we have an extra articular view looking at the capsular side of the labrum and the acetabular rim. You can see that this is a revision case because you can uh, see evidence of prior anchors in the acetabular rim. And the labrum was not in good condition. There was probably two or three millimeters width of labrum left, not enough to achieve a, a good repair that would adequately uh, achieve a seal. However, enough that it may be worth preserving it. So in the picture on the right, you can see where we have incorporated the graft and the native labrum into the same sutures. Uh, so we roll them together so that they become one, the graft and, and whatever is left of the native labrum. And uh, that achieves uh, a much better seal than we could achieve uh, with the native labrum alone. Here's a different case example. Uh, this is a 31-year-old female who uh, had also had a previous hip arthroscopy with a, a very minimalist labral debridement. I don't believe that they did much of a debridement because the, her labrum was so diminutive to begin with. Uh, so in the pictures on the right, uh, one can note that the uh, labrum is no more than two or three millimeters uh, in width. And that width of labrum, that kind of diminutive labrum, cannot achieve an adequate seal. So what do we do in a case like this? Do we debride? Do we repair? Do we reconstruct? Or do we preserve what's left of the labrum and augment it? And we chose to do the, the last. Uh, so on the left you see before and on the right you see after where we have incorporated graft into the labrum, labrum and graft together in the same sutures. And now we have a great seal of the combined graft and labrum against the femoral head. So in summary, labral augmentation using the knotless pull-through technique is a very valuable tool to have in our armamentarium, especially for the diminutive labrum in either the primary or revision setting. It allows us to preserve the circumferential fibers of the native labrum uh, and hence create the best possible seal. Thank you very much.